I'm going to say it again. This brand being only marketed to a younger consumer base is such a crime. <music> I feel like they've been teasing Glossier coming to Sephora for an eternity and it's finally happened. It happened a few days ago. I'm like very excited about this video because if you are new to my channel, you should know that Glossier is like my number one brand that I featured like day one on my channel. I have loved Glossier ever since I discovered it. And I still have a lot of favorites from the brand that still remain in my favorites to this day. So what this is going to be is basically a total brand breakdown of Glossier for you. So I'm going to to tell you what I think is worth it and what I don't think is worth it. I am a pro-choice beauty content creator, so that means I only feature products from brands that are loudly and proudly pro-choice. Now, I have tried their priming moisturizer. They have two different priming moisturizers. Their regular one that is a perfect base for makeup, and then they have their priming moisturizer rich. I have tried that before, and it's a really nice primer. I just have a lot of primers, and I haven't kept it around. Instead, today I am using the MAC Hyper Real Skin Canvas Balm. So that's what I put on my skin. And now we're going to get into the first product, which is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I have this in the shade G11. So it says shake and smooth over moisturized skin with fingertips. Blend upward and outward for sheer coverage and instant dewiness. So it comes out like very slowly, which I really like. And that right there is the texture. You can see it is very watery, very, very runny. This is gonna be for someone who wants the least amount of coverage possible in a base product. I like this product product, but even for me, it tends to be a little bit low coverage. And what I love to do with this is I love to mix it into other foundations. Like I love to mix this into um, my Fenty Pro Filter, which is a full coverage foundation, just to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit glidier. I'm gonna compare this actually to the MAC Face and Body because this is a product that's been around for a very long time. It's a cult classic and I, th I think they're very similar. The MAC Face and Body for reference is just a little bit more coverage than the Glossier. I actually did Glossier on one side MAC on the other side yesterday just to literally see and feel the difference. They're very close, but I will say just by a hair, the MAC is a little bit more coverage and a little bit more plumping, a little bit more dewy. This I felt was a tad less dewy, which I feel like a lot of people might actually like. Still dewy, just not quite as much as the MAC face and body. And it does set down very nicely. Something I like to mention about Glossier that I think really doesn't get talked about enough is that I think this brand is absolutely perfect for maturing skin. I know that it's marketed toward younger people. It's marketed to millennials and Gen Z, which is great. That's great. But I feel like a big demographic is really missing out on this brand because it is all about skincare first, makeup second. And it is my philosophy, not an uncommon philosophy, that as we mature, less is more. So what I'll say about this base is you can see that it really did smooth my skin. It gave it a little bit more evenness. I don't reach for this by itself. Like I said, I usually like to mix it in with something else, but if this is all you need, if you just need something to just kind of quickly put all over your face and kind of take care of some redness and even it out, I think this is a great option for you. But what's gonna up the ante on all of that is the stretch concealer. This is my number one most used concealer to to this day. That's a bold statement. This is on my channel in one of my first videos over five years ago, and it still is one of my favorites. So this is where you can go in and add just a little bit more coverage. And I cannot tell you how incredibly workable this concealer is. I mean, look at how with the warmth of my finger that just blends out so naturally and so beautifully. With these base products from Glossier, I do like to use my finger I just feel like they work the best that way, especially with the skin perfecting tint. It's so light. You don't even want to use a sponge or a brush, I feel like, because that's just going to soak up all of the product. Definitely want to use your fingers with the skin perfecting tint. And also it's, you know, my preferred way to use a stretch concealer as well. I literally keep this in my backpack at all times and just throw it on anytime during the day if I feel like I've, you know, blown my nose and have some redness there, anything like that. It takes a second and this just evens everything out. I actually introduced this to my friend Heather and she's told me that she will just use this to spot conceal and just use this as her base for the day. And I think that's a fantastic idea. Okay, so that is the coverage using those two products and 
no surprise, it looks gorgeous and natural. I've had a lot of people ask me about creasing with concealer. This seems to be a very, very big concern for a lot of people. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think about creasing. And no, it's not because I have absolutely no fine lines under my eyes. I am almost 40 years old. I am not a newborn child. Um, it's just that, you know, really with any concealer, if, if you have fine lines, there's probably going to be a little bit of product that falls into them. That's just a natural thing to happen. I think that what can make or break that is really your application and how you set your under eye. Okay, so we're moving on to bronzer and I'm actually really glad I'm doing this video because I completely forgot about these incredible liquid bronzers from Glossier. I have two different shades of these. Obviously this is the deeper shade, it's called Ray, and I also have the shade Flare. So this right here is the lighter shade Flare, and this is the shade Ray in the solar paint. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna mix them together. I think I'm just gonna use Flare. I think that's gonna be enough for me. Mmm. Look at how beautiful I, that is blending out. Okay, I am like angry with myself for putting these aside. These are absolutely stunning and incredibly easy to blend out. These are even easier. I know this is a very bold statement because some cream bronzers I love are so easy to blend out. These may be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. I do not have the Glossier powder, which is called Wowder. I did have it a long time ago. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It was just sort of like, meh. It's just a very, very minimal, low coverage, of course, powder. And it's very much in line with this, which again, don't hate this, just it's not blowing my socks off, you know? So I'm going to go in with sort of a medium coverage powder. This is my Rare Beauty Loose Powder. I do like to use a powder with just a tad more oomph to it with a dewy look like this because otherwise it's just like too dewy. Okay, so that is set with powder. Next, I'm pulling out a product that I know was in my first video I ever did, which is my Glossier Boy Brow. It is their brow product, and I always get it in the shade brown. I love Boy Brow. I always have at least one on hand. Right now, I have two. This is now kind of my go-to again because when I discovered the Kosas brow products, I fell in love with them, and Kosas is not pro-choice at all. So I had to let go of those, and I tried a Benefit brow gel, which was fine. It's totally fine. It was just like a little bit too wet. And I just kind of picked this back up again and realized that this really is a Goldilocks formula because it's not too dry, not too wet. You're never gonna overdo it with this brow product. It's kind of impossible. It just is effortless. Okay, I am sorry. Like I am mad at myself for putting so much Glossier to the side. I'm so sorry, Glossier, you've been neglected. I hope they're selling it this at Sephora. If they're not, I'm I don't want to tell you, I'm gonna use it anyway, but this is the Glossier Brow Flick in the shade Brown. You can go in and really define certain brow hairs and really lean into that fluffy brow editorial look. So you can see the difference in this brow compared to that brow. They both look good, but this one looks real good. Okay, brows are done and I am very impressed with them. Okay, so now we're gonna get into eyes and I'm gonna use two different Glossier products for this. I'm gonna be using the Glossier Cloud Paint, which I think is by far the most famous product that Glossier has ever made. I really do think of Glossier as kind of like the OG liquid cream blush brand. So I'm gonna take the shade Dusk and I'm going to dab that onto my lids. So that right there is the shade Dusk. It's way too much of it, but that's it. And for me, this is like the perfect sort of like brownie peachy shade, which is just a great, neutral eyeshadow. I feel like I actually don't need to use the other eyeshadow product now because I really like this, but I wanna show it to you. So these shimmery lid stars are so incredibly easy to use and they're so pretty. This is my favorite shade. It's Lily and my God, when you put this on your eyes, it is just like a springtime dream. I'm going to go in with the shade Bun, which is sort of a warm champagne. Okay, those actually work together really beautifully. I love the fact that I can look to the Glossier Cloud Paint for a matte, a simple matte eye, and then add just a little bit 
of glamour. Okay, so we're gonna move on to mascara. I do not have the Glossier mascara because again, like the powder, I tried it and I didn't really love it. It's very, very simple. There's nothing wrong with it. I just like a little bit more drama with my mascara and it was just a little bit too pared down for me, but if that's your jam, get into it. So mascara is done. Also, I refilled my drink. I've had quite a few people tell me that the new glossy eyeliners are something I have to try. Admittedly, I have not tried them yet. I did try the Glossier Play eyeliners when they used to have that branch of Glossier and I liked them, but they don't have that anymore. So anyway, that is on my list of things to try. Before I move on, I also want to mention these eye products. Now these are called Skywash. And I only have two shades of these. I kept these because I found these to be the most easy to apply. These are their matte version of the Lid Stars. So I'm gonna show you, I've actually used this before on my channel and I love this powder blue shade. This is called Pool and it's just like the perfect 60s powder blue. Like, look at that. This actually blends out really, really nicely on the eye. And so does this brownie shade, which is called Palm. I actually tried like the bright green shade and a couple of the other shades, and I felt like they were a little patchy. So these were the only two that really worked out for me. So if you are looking for a matte liquid eyeshadow, these shades, in my opinion, are your best bet. Yeah, and you can see how quickly that dries down. Like it's basically dry at this point, and it's only been like 30 seconds seconds. Okay, drum roll please. We are getting into the iconic cloud paint. So I have six of the cloud paint shades, not all of them, but a lot. So I'm going to swatch for you what I have. Okay, you can see how used and abused this is. This I bought at the beginning of my channel, and I know you're going to be like, Kate, that's expired. Well, you know what? It still goes on great, and it doesn't smell. So I don't know what to tell you. I'm using it. This shade is so, so cute. It's called Beam, and it's just like a beautiful peach. Okay, I'm going to try to remember all these. Can I do it? This is beam, this is dusk, this is dawn, this is spark, this is storm, and this is eve. Yes, I did it. Oh my god, there's another shade I missed. Okay, I have seven. I was wrong. <laughs> okay, this shade right here is haze, and how can we have forgotten about her? Because look, she's a perfect aspen cheek if I've ever seen her. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the formula of the cloud paint. First of all, they're very pigmented, as you can see. A little bit goes a long way. You probably don't need this big of a swatch for your face. They are also a gel formula, so it makes them just a little bit easier to to apply and they do have a blurring quality to them. You can use your fingers or you can use a brush. Can't get over how like dirty and used beam looks because again, this was the first thing I ever bought from Glossier. So I'm gonna go in with this shade, this shade right here, which is the first one I swatched. It's a lovely peachy situation, which I think is gonna go beautifully with this look. And I actually am gonna use a brush to apply this. Oh my God, I forgot that it actually brings out a little peachy pink, which is my favorite. Ay, 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 look at that. Okay, this was the correct decision. I don't know if you can hear those planes flying over me, but should I be worried? Okay, I know I made this video for you guys, but I feel like I'm kind of inadvertently making it for myself now because I'm like, thank God I stumbled upon this again. I don't think I've even used the Eve shade. This was the really, really deep Aspen cheek shade. I cannot wait to pull this out. I think I'm gonna pull this out in a live because this is going to be a gorge. Okay, so now we're moving on to lips and Glossier has several types of lip products. First, I'm going to show you their OG lip product. And I only have it in the shade Cranberry because this was a release they did around the holidays. And the reason I don't have any other shades is because I don't really love this formula anymore. I, I loved the OG formula and they changed it. I'm just going to use the shade so you can see how the formula applies. In theory, I like what this formula is trying to do, but I will say it has a really, really intense like play dough ish scent, which I don't totally mind, but it's a little bit off putting. And these are incredibly dry. Like this looks beautiful right now, honestly, but I feel like in order to use these, you need to make sure your lips are really moisturized and you've kind of like gone over them with a brush to get all the dry parts off because if you don't, it just goes on patchy and I don't love that. But this application looks pretty good because I was real prepared. Again, not a product that I dislike. There's just a lip product that I like way better that I'm gonna move on to right now. And that is the Glossier Ultra Lip, guys. Peace, damn, 
lip products are so good. They are so emollient. They are one of my favorites of this type of lip formula, this sort of like hybrid lipstick, comfortable balm emollient formula. Okay, there's a shade of the Ultra Lip that is my absolute favorite. It is called Villa and I cannot find it right now and I'm not happy. So we're just gonna move on without that, but just keep her in your memory and just maybe when you're shopping, take a look at her. But these are the shades I do have right now. So this is Vesper, this is Portrait, this is Coop, this is Fett, and this is Cranberry. I believe this was a holiday release. I'm not sure if this is still available, it might be. So because we don't have Villa, RIP, I'm going to be using the shade Portrait. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God, it's so good. So incredibly juicy, and I will say these are very, very plushes. They have, they're easy to apply, but they do have a little bit of girth to them. So they really are a hybrid between a lipstick and a balm. Just the juiciest coral springy lip. And now I'm gonna get real extra and I am gonna go in with their lip gloss, which I can't even read the name of the shade because it's so small and I'm becoming elderly, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. It's the Cherry Red Lip Gloss. This lip gloss is having a standoff between the Fenty lip gloss. They're very similar to me, the, um, the Fenty Glass Slipper lip gloss, which is clear. This is incredibly high shine. This is what I go to when I want lips like this that just look like gorgeous. You can't miss them. They almost look shellacked. There's like the tiniest bit of tack to it, but it's like just enough to make it effective. You know what I mean? But it does not feel uncomfortable, not too tacky. I do not notice it. Okay, so moving on to the Glossier Halo Scope. This again is one of my very first uh, cream highlighters that I ever purchased. And to this day, this is still so gorgeous and just incredibly easy to apply like everything else. So I have this in all three shades. I have it in the shade Moonstone, which is opalescent. I have it in the shade Topaz, which is a beautiful bronzy shade. And I also have it in the shade that I first purchased it in, which is Quartz. I believe this is my second of Quartz. They say that Quartz is the most universally flattering out of all three three of those. So I am going to stick with this today and I'm just going to use the warmth of my fingers to apply it. Now I feel like this is the best way to apply it. I just feel like when I put the stick directly on my face, there's a chance that it could pick up some makeup with it. And that's not going to happen with this application. Ooh, it's so good to feel this in my hands again. And I'm going to compare this. Actually, I'm going to go grab it right now. I want to compare this to the Merit uh, Day Glow Highlighting Balm. So I'm going to pull out the shade Kava in that. These are very, very similar products. Okay, so here's the Halo Scope. Here is the Merit. You can see the Merit is just a lot more almost like wet looking and feeling, whereas the Glossier is a little less dewy, a little, I mean, it is dewy, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite as wet to the touch. And there's a little bit, again, a little bit of tack to it, which let me explain, it doesn't stick around. And I feel like this does set down a little bit better than the Merit. Again, we're splitting hairs here because I love them both. Because this Glossier Halo Scope has, again, a little bit of tack to it, just like this gloss. It's just enough to make me feel like I can really control this product like I can't control others. Like, I feel like this is working with the warmth of my fingers. I feel like it's blending in flawlessly, but I also feel like it's gonna stay exactly where I put it. Yes. I'm going to say it again. This brand being only marketed to a younger consumer base is such a crime. It is just such beautiful, approachable, easy to apply makeup that is good for your skin. And again, I just love their motto or whatever you want to call it. It is skin first, makeup second. And that's exactly how I've always felt about Glossier. And that's why I love it so much. Okay, guys, so those are my thoughts on Glossier. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was informative. I really think Glossier at Sephora is gonna make that brand a lot more accessible to a lot more people. And I'm really excited about that. So I'd love to know what you guys think of the brand. If anything looks like something that you wanna try, I'd love to hear about that in the comments. And that's it, you guys are the best. Please stay safe out there and cheers till next time. Bye. Mm.